Hi, and welcome to this virtual bridge session. And today we have with us uh, Dr. Lena Petrakiva from Glasgow Caledonian University, um, who's dealt with that problem of well, long teaching sessions, perhaps with a highly technical and detailed material. And that could be a real pain and uh, something that could take a lot of time. Video could maybe help that out, but plain old video maybe wouldn't cut it. So what if we could actually provide personalised, self-personalising, self-tailoring video to do it? Maybe we can, and Lena's going to tell us how that can be done. Thanks, Jason. Um, yeah, I've struggled with that dilemma for a while, and uh, when we were forced to suddenly go home and start teaching online, a lot of the subject, there was no problem with that. And, and there are some subjects that I was just terrified even attempting because even in class, um, when it's highly complex, you people just get lost within the first 10 minutes if they don't do it at the same time and ask the questions and to resolve any potential issues or misunderstandings at that point, which is not going to work online. And um, thinking about how I could do that um, came with a bit of a challenge. So let me share my screen first, and then I'll explain what um, I ended up doing. Um, so my idea was to try and find a way to tailor the sessions as well as have a, a detailed video guiding through the whole process. And the, the first challenge I had because of the time of the year that this happened was the sessions for um, formatting large documents, dissertations, reports, articles, things like that. And because there are so many little differences with, between a report or a dissertation or a small dissertation, big dissertation, will be printed, will not be printed, where the captions are. So many different variations that in a live class, I could tailor for that particular class. But if I record a session and explain all the variations, people get lost and obviously it doesn't refer to me. So they just leave. And uh, it's quite a long session as well. And I just was trying to come up with how would I do that? How would I do that? That will still be tailored, but I don't need to record hours and hours of all different variations. And uh, when the, most of the things are the same, but some differences. Um, and then I ended up actually um, coming with, um, you know, just that kind of like the, the light bulb moment uh, where I decided there must be a way to make it timed as well. So at the relevant time, so they can access it at any point when they need it rather than whenever I'm around and they can rewind. But also I want to make it tailored to them without doing too much work in terms of recording as well. So um, this graph is probably the simplest way to explain the issues when we're talking about generic resource that we can stand there and you can find it the same, the ones you find on YouTube, um, or a tailored one for your particular circumstances, for your particular requirements. And um, the access timing of that, will it be the right time when you need it? and it's going to be personalized, then I could be live and answering all the questions, which is going to be very resource intensive, um, or will it be always available? How it can be tailored and always available, you know, without creating multiples uh, of all the variations. So basically what I was trying to do is achieve a tailored one and always on at the same time, which was the trick. And um, I started thinking, you know, and sometimes that's not a great thing. I come up with some weird things. Um, but in this case, it actually um, first started with analyzing what is it exactly the issue. So I needed something that provided choice, that provided um, options. I needed something that will be available all the time and it needs to be online independent from me. So um, it doesn't end up with me repeating lots of sessions again, just online and obviously getting students lost in the process. Um, so what I was thinking, I need um, a lot of options, but a scaffolding, a structure in place that will allow for navigation through those options. And because of that, um, I wanted to make it also that um, it's not listing every single option, but um, the, the person, the participant chooses at every stage when there is a, a split in the possible scenarios, they can choose 
where what their particular circumstances are. And uh, <laughs> since I said, there's too many options. Um, depending on the type of work being created, even just for this particular example, just formatting large documents. Large documents obviously vary, and uh, there's, there's too many, too many different scenarios, and each one of them results in slight difference in what is being um, shown to the students. So uh, my uh, light bulb moment was to use a decision tree, where at every stage. I ask them, so what is it that you need to do? Is it a dissertation or report? Major, big difference in terms of the flow of the document and uh, the way the major headings are done. Um, and then asking them for um, where the captions are going to be, where the, it's above the figure, below the figure, or mixed, like APA style. Um, will it be printed? Because that's the margins that are different. So every little choice like that resulted in branching out to um, a set of options, of playlists, of small video tutorials for every little aspect. So some of them will be identical, like what the normal text would look like. It's exactly the same in a report or dissertation printed or not, the text will look the same, but the headings, the margins, all of those things are slightly different. So by navigating through that decision tree, you end up with customized playlists of all these little different elements that they will need for their circumstances. And um, that basically um, looks something like this. I had uh, to do it very quickly, <laughs> as you can imagine. Time was pressing at the time. <laughs> and um, I don't have a lot of expertise in building. I, can, I know what it needs to be done to do it properly in terms of web-based tool, but uh, without the uh, time and uh, the background to do that myself, I just built a website, literally just a free platform. I used um, Google Sites because it's easy and it's free and just build it as simple buttons, navigating through pages, as simple as that. And um, to um, illustrate, this is roughly what it looks like. I'll show you in a second, the live one. Um, and to simply start asking, giving you a little bit of background about what this is all about and then giving you choices. And if those choices are more complicated, um, it has a short video explaining the different options and how to decide what do you need, because sometimes um, you're not given detailed instructions, so you need to make up your own decisions. So uh, a little guide video, for example, for positioning of captions, was it above, below, or mixed, pros and cons in each one, so they can make an informed choice. And um, as I said, that is purely just a Google site with buttons and navigating through pages that results in getting through um, a list of videos. So these are just example of different pages. So there's an explanatory video and buttons basically to navigate to that particular section um, um, and uh, further choices. And the final page is pretty much a list of links and videos. And they're all bite-sized. Uh, you know, we always use that word, but they are like ranging from a minute to nine minutes, I think is the longest one. And it was quite a lot uh, of talking from me rather than showing them tools. Um, but each one of them is very, very short video tutorial about that particular aspect. And the structure is also the way they're they should be following. However, because they are all individual videos, they can jump to a particular one if later on they discover, oh, I don't remember how to do that particular bit, they can go directly to that particular video. Um, the final page they end up is customized to their choices leading up to that page. Uh, but because of that, I don't have a navigation of the website because otherwise you can imagine that tree structure being available in a menu. <laughs> it's going to get a lot more confusing. So the navigation is entirely through the buttons. But um, if you need to go back to that particular list to find how to do that particular element, obviously you need a shortcut of some kind. So I tell them ideally, you know, bookmark this page so you can go to it quickly. But also I give them the option to download um, that playlist as a PDF file with the links. So they can have it offline and they can have quick access to it. Um, and um, there's the downloadable, that's basically what it looks. These are your choices, just in case you've forgotten what you've chosen. And this are the videos that uh, you will need to learn how to do all of those elements. And um, the advantages of doing it that way, um, first of all, is just web-based. So no additional 
um, software platform required. It, it is literally just a website. Uh, it's self-paced. Um, it's always on. They can access it at any point, whenever they need it, middle of the night or throughout the year. And every single choice they make is clearly explained. And uh, at the end, they get a very precise, personalized, tailored video tutorial about their particular circumstances. Um, each video, again, can be accessed independently. So they can jump and review a particular aspect that they may have forgotten or have issues with. And uh, they still have access, obviously, to contact me if they need to for any particular issues. But I've uploaded all the videos to YouTube. So if people with bad internet connection, obviously, YouTube will adjust the quality. So I don't need to worry about how they're going to access this. And uh, if they have any connection issues or slow internet or whatever, YouTube's taking care of that. So it's all there. It's available um, to access even just searching, but obviously. Um, for every single video on its own. It doesn't make much sense. So every description of the video says, this is part of a larger video tutorial list. You can find it here <laughs> and has a link to the full structure just in case someone just stumbles on those videos. And what is that little bit there? Um, so the videos are um, available for anyone. Um, there are things that obviously um, need to be considered in terms of uh, approaching this kind of um, structure, a, a decision tree to personalized uh, learning. First of all, every choice that is given exponentially grows the number of final outcomes. Um, at the end of this, just few different uh, choices I have to make, few different options for a large document formatting, I ended up with 27 different playlists. You can imagine one more choice and you know that just explodes. Most of them are the same, but you still need to be very careful when constructing each one to make sure it follows the choices that um, have been leading up to that particular playlist. Um, and um, this can be avoided if proper web design is um, used. So if this is, for example, an option uh, tick boxes and that generates a playlist, that can be done a lot easier. There's no problem with exponential growth. It could be used with tagging the files. Um, so there is a way to do it if you know enough about web programming to do it properly and avoid the problem with exponential growth that I had. Um, in my case, it was just about manageable to do it. Is it 27 different playlists, 27 different paths? Um, is just about just about the limit of where you can still focus, and it requires just one A3 size piece of paper to make sure you follow everything. Um, but any more than that, it starts to become um, unmanageable. So it needs ideally a bit more expertise. Um, so this kind of approach could be applied to a lot of different scenarios. Things like um, even just deciding what kind of assignment you want for your students. So is it going to be individual or group? Okay, if it's a group one, do you want it to be live presented or it's going to be offline? Okay, that leads you to further choices. Um, is it going to be uh, with individual elements? Do you want a collaborative element? Or are they creating at the end? All of those little choices can lead you to, for example, a subset of possible assignments that can be given. Um, it's just one example. Or if you're looking for um, software that does something and you, you're really not familiar with that, if someone designs that kind of um, decision tree to make your choice, so do you need to create a video or audio? Does it need to have texts? Where it's going to be accessed? Is it going to be um, live online? Is it going to be offline, downloadable? And each one of those options can lead you to a subset of platforms or softwares that can do the job you need. So the approach is applicable to lots of different settings. Anything that requires tailoring and navigation um, to, to get to that tailoring can be uh, applied, um, can be created using a decision tree structure. Um, it could be used as well for um, treatments, um, suggesting treatments, for example, again, um, basic symptoms and then navigating to, okay, maybe you should look at those things. So um, it could be implemented in a lot of different settings. Anything is it that uh, is tailoring, uh, it's requiring um, a, lot of, um, a lot of detailed information. 
uh, that otherwise will get lost if you explain every single option at every single stage. Um, so, and also scenarios, if, you, if it is designed the way I've done it with videos, um, all the different applications where it's like, do what I show you. So you can pause and do it yourself and check against the video to make sure you're doing exactly the same thing. So all of those um, potential fields of application um, can be used, um, can you, um, utilize that kind of approach. So um, yeah, in summary, <laughs> it's very simple as an idea. It's uh, a bit time consuming to um, record all of those videos, uh, especially considering they'll be watched in a sequence ideally, and they need to be using the same terminology, the same document, same look, so it doesn't look like suddenly something's changed and you're not sure why it's changed. Um, so it, it did require a bit of, of initial planning, but um, it was overall about two weeks to, to do all that. So it's not insurmountable at all. And uh, if you have a bit more technical know-how, you can do it a lot better than I did. <laughs> so this is something potentially you could explore if you have uh, the skills. So um, I wanted to show you a live demo of the uh, website. So um, there it is, a simple Google site and a brief explanation and options basically um, to decide what is it that you're trying to create and that will uh, basically guide you through your own personalized list. I've uh, added the option to ask me additional questions. So I have a, um, a pathway that I check every week. So far, there's been a lot of use and not, no one has asked any questions. So I don't know, are they not taking it, uh, taking anything at all or they actually find it self-explanatory, they don't need me. <laughs> I think I'll prefer the last so <laughs> I'll show us that. So let's say I want to uh, write a dissertation and uh, it's asking me how big is that dissertation? And this potentially could be used um, if it's a thesis. Um, obviously there are additional tools if you're doing a thesis like master documents, sub documents that would be quite useful that don't apply really for dissertation level. Um, so those could be added additionally and, and that's still in the pipeline potentially to be done. Um, but in terms of the size, it matters because of the font sizes and the, the spaces that are left. So that's why at this point I'm asking, is it a big one or a small one? So I can say, okay, let's say that's a really big dissertation, master dissertation, so lots of different options. Um, there is a short video here explaining um, about the positioning of the captions, pros and cons, where you put them, how it's perceived, um, what is the usual practice, and some pictures of what it looks like if you position one way or another, and then the buttons to navigate. So let's say I don't like mixed. I find it very, very weird. APA is not my thing. Um, I prefer all captions to be above. So I'm just going to choose that one. And again, the next set of options are going to be printing. If it's printed, single-sided, double-sided, because obviously then you'll need to change the margins in different ways, or it's just going to be electronic submission. So don't bother even changing the margin. So let's say it's all electronic at the moment. So I'm happy to do that. And there's my playlist. So if I go, for example, starting from the beginning, introducing the concept of what is a style, this video is exactly the same in all scenarios because it is literally the concept of uh, using styles in words. So it opens as a simple YouTube video. Uh, I'm not going to bother you with that one. Uh, it's a simple YouTube video and uh, obviously an explanation here, this is part of a series and there's the link if you need to jump back to that. Seems to be people are viewing it, so it's not too bad. Um, now, the next one is what's a normal style and how to format normal style, heading ones and all the rest of them, and uh, useful tips all the way through for additional elements that may not be flowing right, but there are important to mention things like um, if you're using Harvard and you're doing manual um, referencing, you know, just knowing about the A to Z button in words, that saves a few hours, everybody who's not noticed that uh, when it's right there in the home tab, and there are quite a few of those. And um, there's the option to download the playlist, so that can be available or simply bookmark the page and navigate back to it. Um, that particular video is exactly one minute. I'm just going to jump to a random one dealing with large tables. I think that's a medium-sized one. That's an... Okay. Adverse. So previously when we were using spreads, 
which is very weird because we've not monetized Jeez, that. We were heavily meeting dependent. It took okay. us hours to update. There you go. And that's <laughs> almost four minutes video. So perfectly manageable. Um, and literally giving lots of examples and me explaining and showing them how to do it. So that I think is the gist of what I did. Um, so um, any questions, anything you want me to elaborate on or show you? Thank you very much, Lena. So how many videos were required to be made for this decision tree? At the end, I think we're around 40 minutes, uh, 40 different videos. Um, <laughs> total amount for every playlist um it ended up if you watch them you know one after the other it's about an hour so if anyone okay. is deciding to go through all of it, it's about an hour's worth uh overall with all the different versions i would say close to two hours of video it's just some variations some the same used throughout so so not not too bad still manageable considering they're small and before I let anyone else come in with questions, I will use a uh, yes, cheers prerogative. Um, and say, I take it there's a decision to be made as to whether it's worth in each area having separate videos. I take it there's some things that can be dealt with if you're uh, wanting to do um, small margins, do this way, large margins, do that way, and just include Absolutely. it within a single video. And so Absolutely. Um, I, for example, I just made an executive decision that everybody is using Arial size 12. And um, I told them, you know, check your module handbook just in case it's different, but that usually works for pretty much everybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I didn't even go into the options or it may look slightly different if you do it. At times your own, for example, will look quite different, but mm, don't think anyone wants really to use electronic uh, document with times your own. Um, but I do explain sometimes within the videos, those slight variations um if they need to be and always mentioning obviously what i'm showing you as an example it doesn't mean yours is going to be identical so do check any additional guidance you may have and this is how you can adjust it if need be and jamie's i uh, wonder if you're able to uh, unmute and come on with your question there yeah uh, yeah so um i've seen a few this is always a great solution I've seen other uh, solutions that led by academics whereby um, it's uh, um, a shadow solution that, that they ad adopt for their classes and there's not much buy-in central. And I just wondered if you've had buy-in from the organisation or from e-learning uh, to roll this out wider so that you're obviously not left alone with the maintenance and support of that project. Um, in terms of uh, maintenance, hopefully there wouldn't be too much because uh, the new versions of Word that are coming are not drastically different. So I'm not changing unless there is a drastic difference. The approach itself um, has been around for 30 odd years. So uh, I don't think and in terms of a style and a table and those kind of conceptual uh, ideas, they've been around forever. So I don't think I need to worry about amending any of those. So in terms of maintenance, there isn't anything. Uh, but rolling it out as an idea and getting wider use, um, it seems to actually snowball because I send it to the lecturers to give to the students and they were like, oh my God, I'm writing my PhD. That's going to be amazing to use. Oh, can I use this for a module handbook? And it's like, of course, it's exactly the same thing. It's just a tiny report. So just use the option for report. It's exactly the same thing. Obviously, terminology is different, but you can make the jump. Um, so um, actually they started themselves using it and passing it on um, to, to others. Um, at the moment, I'm also, because I mentioned about thesis formatting, which is another beastie, um, I uh, leave that one still um, in the pipeline. One day I'll have enough time to sit down and do the extra set of videos about um, outline view and master documents, sub documents. Uh, but at the moment, um, I've given this to our graduate school to distribute to the PhD students. And I just do a um, couple of times a year, I do a face to face session to give them the top up, which is the master documents, sub documents. So sometimes, if it is just that little bit of extra difference, it's worth even not doing it and doing live classes. So it's always weighing in how much of an effort it is to build this against how much of an effort it is to actually do the live class and to build that to offset the multiples um, of classes and repeat students coming to me with questions that have been covered in class, but they just too, too much for them to take. Um, that was definitely worth doing, but in terms of additional smaller sort of subtle differences, 
there isn't that much demand. So I'm happy to do those as live session top ups. <laughs> so um, at the moment, my approach with this is um, give it to the students to go through practice and then just do Q&A and whatever extra bit they need. Um, so that's how it's continuing at the moment. Things may change. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you for that. Um, I was interested in your usage slide as well. Have you had any feedback from other members of staff who have adopted the same uh, approach yet? Not really. Um, I think the planning of, of that scares some people and um, they're happy to continue narrated PowerPoints and, and live sessions. Um, so unfortunately, <laughs> it, seems, it seems like it's scary to undertake. It did require a, a two, three days of, of literally just planning it all. Um, and uh, I had one weird thing that happened at the beginning when I first rolled it out. Um, when obviously I don't want to use a real example during that because people start reading the text rather than concentrating on what I'm showing them and or trying to copy the text, which is even worse. So um, obviously I used the... Um, uh, the, what's it called the made made up Latin thing. Oh yeah, Floris. Uh, uh, the uh, one, uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> the one that you can even remember. Um, so the first time when I send it to um, someone to look at, and they're like, "Why is it in Spanish?" And I was like, "What? It can't be in Spanish." And they were like, no, "But but it's in Spanish." But underneath the video is in English. And I was like, "It doesn't make any sense." Uh, and then I realized they're talking about the document itself, and they thought that was Spanish. <laughs> Oh, it's just made up. <laughs> so I've had that initially going like, <laughs> but um, you cannot really cover all possibles until you try it. So I'm, I still think the better option for me was to do it um, with the made up language. So to stop them going through, oh, that's not for me, that's you know, engineering or nursing. It's the same thing. We're talking about large document, doesn't matter what it says. Um, so that's why I made it like that. But it does put some people off going like, I don't understand this. What is this? Like, just I, beyond that. <laughs> I take it as well that the underlying idea of that sort of self-tailoring um, doesn't necessarily need to go to YouTube. It could go to anything. That's, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, so, um, it depends yeah. what kind of platforms you have uh, used for and where it's going to be used. At, at that time, especially in the beginning of lockdown, there were still a lot of people struggling to get good broadband and uh, for that and going basically to random places even around the world. Um, for that, I thought the simplest solution is we have our own repository system, but it doesn't cater as well for variations in connectivity. So it's much easier just to put it on YouTube and they're familiar with that, so I don't need to worry about them stumbling their way through something else. So um, that was the scenario. I was contemplating as well embedding the videos on the website. Uh, but you can imagine 19 videos on the same page. <laughs> it's going to be the scroll of there. <laughs> and it's going to be very difficult to find what you need because it's just one thing after another. And they look in preview, they look quite similar as a document and word. Um, so I've uh, decided just to have the, the list and went to the path of least resistance and uh, systems that I know would function like Google Sites and YouTube pretty much. <laughs> and a PDF document, again, could be viewed anywhere. Indeed. Well, I think um, what is clear is that this it's technique this. certainly promotes uh, the, um, the obviously the very good practice of shorter bite sized and putting them together, whereas um, and then another time, another place, uh, a lecturer might have thought about putting together an hour long video, that's, um, which, of course, we know is not great practice and, uh, and such. So. Now, anyone who's seen statistics and YouTube videos knows that there's a big dip after the third minute, even third is a lucky. Um, so unless you have a way to jump to a specific section, because that's another thing I was considering recording each session in a way and then creating um, time stamps and then allowing them to navigate. But then I thought, I'm going to have lots of repeats. It doesn't make any sense. So better off splitting it all together and reusing the repeats rather than creating, I don't know, 27 different hour-long videos. 
Well, and on that very topical theme, then I'm going to draw to a close our recording here today. Lena, thank you very much for giving us You're insight welcome. into a technique for self-tailoring videos. And uh, I dare say a few people will take that up. Thank you very much.